everybody, welcome back to another grilling video and today we are going to be making some delicious sweetened ham cubes. I know that sounds a little odd and we've all seen videos of people smoking a whole ham but we're going to do something just a little different. I think you're going to love it. Great dish when you have company or just for snacking around the house. Alright, let's talk about what we need for this recipe. What we need is a ham. You can get these already smoked. That's usually what you use. It's the simplest way to do it. But be really cautious, you don't want to get one that's pre-sliced. So this is a non-pre-sliced one. This one is right at 10 pounds. Smithfield at my local grocery store is the brand, that's what they have. We're also going to use one onion that we'll chop up here in a little bit, some brown sugar, cinnamon, allspice, cloves, butter, salt, pepper, and you want a little bit of a liquid. Now you can just use water, you can use maple syrup, you can use apple juice, but we made wassail just around Christmas time and from New Year's, and we have a little bit of that left over. Wassail is a traditional um, cider, if you will. So it's a mulled cider. It's got a little red wine, a little bit of uh, apple cider, and all kinds of seasonings, a little bit of citrus. It's absolutely delicious. It's gonna help infuse some flavor into this. Now, again, the first thing we need to do is prep this. We wanna cut this into about one inch cubes. That's what we want. We're gonna be able to stick a toothpick in it, pop it out, and eat it. That's gonna be the, the sort of method by which we'll have this. Now the first thing we wanna do is orient ourselves to this because we're gonna to have to cut it up and we, want, we don't want a whole lot of cuts through it until we actually get those, um, those little cubes. So you notice we have the bone here. If I flip it around to the back side, the bone comes out at an angle here. So that means our bone kinda of goes in through it this direction, right? So first thing we want to try to do is cut that out of there. I'm just going to go ahead right on the top here. See which direction here. Bone is closer to the top here. So I'm going to go from here to the edge with, I like using a fillet knife for this. I know not a very kitcheny thing. It's not a very cook's thing to do, but they work great. So right along that bone and it lets me feel that bone. I'm going to keep going right along it and I'm tapping on it. I can hear it as I go. That has given me a nice angled cut. Just use your knife, cut along it a little bit. See if we can get right around the end here. And this is why a fillet knife is good. It's nice and thin. It lets you really get in there a bit. And what that does, is it lets me get my fingers around that, hopefully, in order to pull that bone out of there. Now, would it be easier to do when it was cooked? Absolutely, but we want to cube it before we cook it, which is a little different than what you would normally think. I think that is good to just go right on down it. One side out. Now, you'll notice I pulled the cap off of that, so I need to get this bone out of here. I don't know if you can see that. We'll get that in a moment. Now I'm trying to leave the skin on the outside of this because that is good flavor as well. I can remember as a kid, my uncle would broil that, I guess. We would have just fried pork skins. Oh, man, oh man. For a kid from up north where the pork skins wasn't a common thing to get on the side of the road like it is down in Louisiana or somewhere, that was a, quite a treat. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. Let me show you how we go ahead and prep the seasonings and then we'll cut the meat up. We'll mix it all in with the seasonings. We'll put it in a pan and we'll begin to cook it. Now, this starts out like most things ham and that is we're gonna have some delicious brown sugar. Now, I'd love to tell you the exact amount but I won't know it because I'm just winging it. So we're probably gonna use about a cup or so. We're gonna add in a little bit of cinnamon. Again, I'm not, I'm not doing any real measuring here. This is probably a half a teaspoon or so. And I'm gonna do about the same for allspice and ground cloves. Now I'm using ground because I'm actually gonna put this right on top of the actual ham as opposed to um, you know, poking them in like, like you would cloves. Honestly, since we're cutting this up in cubes, we want everything to be bite-sized and sort of edible, if you will. That was allspice, and now we're doing about the same amount of ground cloves. Again, just a good winter ham flavor. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and do a little bit of salt. Now 
grandkids got me these for Christmas, so I'm using them. <laughs> They're actually pretty cool. It's neat when the salt falls in and the blue light's hitting it. It has a nice look to it, especially if it's not in direct sunlight or in the in the shade. It's a uh, kind of lights it up a little bit like uh, like a black light almost. It's kind of neat. Now with that, let's go ahead and just mix this up a little bit. I'm just going to use my hands. Now I am not going to pour any of my wassail in here. I don't want to make mud. I just want to make something that we can coat our ham with. Okay, as you can see, we have our ham here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this into about one inch cubes. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of this fat in there. Frankly, that's all okay. I'm fine using all of that as we cook this. About one inch or so, so thick slices is what we're looking to do. We now just want to go ahead and put this right into our bowl. And you can see our mixture of brown sugar and seasonings here. Let's show you what we're going to do with these things. Now, here's what's interesting. We're just going to take these and we're going to mix them up. We want to coat all of these in that brown sugar before we pop them into our pan. Now, I mixed them up now because I wasn't sure if I had enough brown sugar for that amount. I do. I'm going to cut the rest up here and toss them in there as well. That's good. All right, we've got all of our ham chunks here. Now, you remember, we just roll these around in some dry seasonings. And what you'll find, just like when you season a brisket and you're creating a bark, the moisture from in the meat extracts out and it goes into a, like almost a paste form on the outside. Now, if we were to just put these in a pan and smoke or grill them, they would get crunchy on the outside. We don't really want that. What we want is something that's really, really tender and juicy and sweet. So we're going to take these and put them in one of these little disposable aluminum trays. I think these things work great for doing stuff like this. It's a little uh, hard to manage here, so we'll pop them in here like this. We want this tray to be, oh, about three quarters of the way full. All right. So we have our tray here. Now, next thing we want to do is pop them into the smoker. Now, ideally, this would be great to do on the smoker itself. I'm doing them on the gas grill side on the top shelf. And that's just because my grill's still broken from after the hurricane. So until I know what the insurance company is going to do, I'm leaving it here. So <laughs> there it sits. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get these in here. Now, I'm not going to put liquid in them yet. Remember, I have my wassail and I have butter. Butter and wassail together is going to give it this amazing, creamy, delicious, sweet flavor. But I want to start by heating these up. And I want the bottom to get just a little bit of a... Uh, a glaze, if you will, to them. So I'm going to put them in the grill like this for about 20 minutes or so, checking them often, stirring them as well. With that, we'll open this up and we'll pop these guys right up here on the top shelf. I'm leaving them open so I can mix them around easier. And I have the far left and the far right burner on very low. Now my goal here is to cook these on low somewhere around 225 to 250 degrees. I'll be keeping an eye on the thermometer here because I really want to be sure that I don't go scorching them or cooking them too fast. I want them to slow cook and just stay nice and tender. This has been on now for about 25 or 30 minutes and you can see they're starting to look nice. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of our wassail right into this just to cover the bottom of the pan. That will allow all those juices to get into that meat. Well, this has been on the grill now for about 45 minutes or so. And I just came out and the grill was off. So here's the reality sometimes of a cooking video. I just ran out of, out of fuel in the middle of it. It looks like it's about done. I'm going to try a little piece of this. Oh my god. Holy Hannah, that is good. The wassail, you can really taste it in there. I mean, it's this apple juice, spicy, citrus flavor. It's just phenomenal. Here, let me pull the camera up and show you a close-up of this, just so you can see what it looks like. Just take a look at that. All those ham pieces are just so tender. Here. That is phenomenal looking. The smells coming out of here are, um, I mean, just... Oh. It's so sweet smelling. Oh my lord. You know, I was going to I was going to do some more to this. I was going to add more brown sugar. I was going to put a little bit of onion and some butter in it and let it just smooth over, but 
This looks phenomenal. I think I might do one slight variation that I'll show you. I have it, I think I'm gonna do it in a, a low temperature on the Blackstone so it gets a nice grilling on the outside. But this is just, I mean, oh my gosh. Hmm. It's tender, but every bite you get this extra spicy apple cider. It's this, this wassail mulled cider stuff. And, Holy hammer, that's good. All right, let's show you the other way we're gonna do this because I'm not messing with this anymore. And I gotta go run and get propane for the, for the, uh, for the pit boss. Wow, that is good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna fire up the Blackstone, check it out. Now I'm gonna turn on these three burners over here. As soon as this gets up to temperature, I'm gonna take the middle one and I'm gonna turn it on its very lowest setting. I'm gonna leave these on high. What I'll do is I'm gonna start them over here slowly move it over to the warm and then put them over on the far side just to heat them up the rest of the way it's going to be phenomenal here too now with this side getting hot instead of using any uh oil i'm just going to go ahead and put some of these chunks of the fat we trimmed off of there we'll let that heat up that'll get us nice and greased up here on the stove itself all right that's what we want you see how we see that little bit of that fat coming right off of there precisely what we're looking for Go ahead and get these off of here. This was just there to help keep this nice and moist. Let's go ahead and get this ham right on this hot side over here. And it's got a little bit of that sugar water where it's extracted that out of there. Exactly what we're looking for. Now that brown sugar smells amazing already. See all that caramelized sugar right there? It's good stuff. Now, just want to go with a little bit of our wassail on here. I'm going to cover that right on up, let that steam in there. All right next to this, we'll start our caramelized onions. Now, I say caramelized because we are putting brown sugar apple cider on these and just letting these guys go for a minute. That will be some phenomenal flavor to go with these. We'll keep them separate because the rest of the family doesn't care for that. Caramelized brown sugar and wassail and apple cider right there. Now we just want to spread these out, let them get a little bit of a crust on them. We'll let these go for about eight or nine more minutes. Look at that, those are just caramelized. <laughs> They're amazing looking. I'm gonna have to get my knife to get these all off of here because it's just sticky from the wassail and the brown sugar. These are now ready to come off of here. Just like that, we have an amazing ham done two different ways. You saw me cooking these up on the Blackstone as well. Let's give one of these a shot. Oh my God. It's sweeter and a little bit more dry than this, which is really good as well, but it's a slightly different taste. You can really taste that spiced and mulled cider in it. A little cooler now that it's been sitting with some of these onions. Hmm. Man, this is heaven. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is a great dish. Put this out on the counter. Let people come by with toothpicks or little tiny forks. Grab a bite as they walk around or serve it with a spoon and just load up a plate with all of this delicious uh, ham as well. If you like this um, moist, mulled, and really flavorful, or if you like it just a little bit crispy on the outside from sitting on the grill. And these are phenomenal pieces here as well. A little tougher, a little tougher for sure, but absolutely delicious. All right, I got to end this thing. We'll see you guys next week right out here at the grills while we're putting together another dish. Bye y'all. Safe and happy grilling.